Bismillah alhamdulillah salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Islam the way of life here on Ikra Bangla. I'm your host Abul Hasnat. I hope you've had a good time since we last saw you inshallah. Before we do anything else, let's get started with some Quran. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Fakuli washrabi wa qarri ayna فَإِمَّا تَرَيْنَّ مِنَ الْبَشَرِ أَحَدًا فَقُولِي إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَنِ صَوْمًا لِلرَّحْمَنِ صَوْمًا فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْسِيًّا فأتت به قومها تحمله قالوا يا مغيم لقد جئت شيئا فريا يا أخت هارون ما كان أبوك امرأ سوء وما كانت أمك بغيا فأشارت إليه قالوا كيف نكلم من كان في المهد صبيا قال إني عبد الله آتاني الكتاب وجعلني نبيا وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُ وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيَّا وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْنِي جَبَّارًا شَقِيَّا والسلام علي يوم ولدت ويوم أموت ويوم أبعث حيا ذلك عيسى بن مريم قول الحق الذي فيه يمترون ما كان لله أن يتخذ من ولد سبحانه إذا قضى أمرا فإنما يكون له كن فيكون صدق الله العلي العظيم ما شاء الله as always we love the beautiful Quran we love the recitation of the Quran and we will always do our best to make sure that we have the Quran played for you so you can enjoy it at home too. Inshallah. Once again, I'm your host, Abul Hasnat. We have our email across the bottom. We have our WhatsApp number across the bottom. Inshallah, I hope you can join into our show via these communication methods. Mums and dads, if you want to message in um, or email in to let us know if you want to bring your children on the show or you have some comments about our show, Inshallah. We'd love to hear from you. And if you have some videos or if you've done a good deed, Please send them in to us and maybe we'll take the chance to show it when we take a small break and we show you our good deed videos. I'm bringing back some of my guests. This is, I'm in my second series um, of Islam the Way of Life and I brought back my guests from the first week because they were so amazing. So without me, for those that missed the first episode, I'm going to allow them to reintroduce themselves. So my guests on the far side, when you're ready, do salam to the middle camera, tell us your name and your age. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Kyra and I'm nine years old. MashaAllah. Kyra, nine years old, welcome to the show. And my guest closest to me, when you're ready, do salam to the camera. Um, give us your name and your age. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Khadija and I am seven years old. I have Kyra, who's nine years old, Khadija, seven years old. And you're two sisters, aren't you? Yeah. MashaAllah. It's amazing to have you guys back. 
Um, and yes, last time they were here, I got um, Khadija to do uh, the opening for us. She did Surah Fatiha. Uh, today, Khadija, you told me you're going to give me a different surah, aren't you? Which one would you like to do? Surah Nas. Surah Nas, inshallah. Khadija's going to do and start, um, start this program as well with her Surah Nas. So Khadija, when you're ready, start with uh, um, start by looking at the camera and recite Surah Nas. Kun a'udhu bi rabbin nas, malikin nas, ilahin nas, min sharri waswasil khunnas, alladhi waswiso fi sudurin nas, min al jinnati wan nas. Sadaqallahu alayhi wa sallam. well done. Well done. And those of you that are at home that are practicing surah, if you get stuck, don't stop. You saw Khadija got stuck, but she reminded herself and she got straight back in. And mashallah, she managed to finish it. And if you don't, there's always going to be someone there to help you. So don't worry. Try your best. Well done, Khadija. That was really good. You took the break, but you managed to get back in. Okay, um, Kaira, which surah are you practicing at the moment? Bayina. Surah Bayina. Oh, a very hard and long surah. Well, um, look, Kaira, I don't. If you're happy, would you like to share how much you've learned of Surah Bayina? Okay, when you're ready, um, um, Kaira, sorry, look into the camera for us and nice and loudly re recite Surah Bayina. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Lam yakun al-lazina kafaru min ahli al-kitab wal-mushrikina munfakina hatta tatiyahum al-bayina. Rasulun min Allah yatulu sufan mutahara fiha khutubun qayyima wa ma tafarraka al-lazina utu al-kitab illa min ba'di ma jaa Mashallah, uh, That's very good, very good. It's very, it's actually a very hard surah because the ayahs are very long, and this is what they call a madani surah. Surah Bayina was revealed when the Prophet ﷺ went to Medina, and it's quite easy to tell the difference between a madani and a makki surah because madani surahs the ayahs are very long. And this is what Bay um, Bayina is, it has a very long ayah. Um, I know as well, that you do have some short ones as well, like Izaja, that's a Madani Surah. But Bayina is one of the first long ones. So well done, um, Kaira, that's amazing. And inshallah, I hope my viewers at home will make dua that you can finish that Surah very soon. And we look forward to you maybe coming back one day and re reading the whole Surah first. So well done, inshallah. Right. Um, before I do the surah, um, I would like to talk a bit more because we talk about families, it's family time, this is a family show um, and I promised these guys I want to talk about family. So, um, Kaira, last time you were telling me that you've got two more brothers, haven't you? Do you want to tell us their names and a bit about them? My first brother, his name is Musa and my second brother, my youngest brother's name is Noah. Ah, and, and you're the oldest, aren't you? And um, do you want to tell us, is there something special about Noah? Yeah, Noah, he's autistic, so he needs like more help at home and like somebody needs to always be with him in school. Yeah, Khadija, do you want to add to that? Do you help out with Noah as well? Yeah, and he needs lots of support in school. In school as well, yeah. And why do we talk about this? Because we always talk about good deeds and how you can do good things. And as you can hear, mashallah, Kyra is telling us how she supports at home. So I hope you guys at home can support mum and dad too. It doesn't have to be looking after a student. It could be in anything. It could be helping, supporting in cleaning, in hoovering, in um, doing the dishes. But as long as you can support mum and dad, that's the biggest thing. Do you feel good when you support mum and dad, Kyra? Yeah. At the beginning, it feels a bit tiresome, doesn't it? But once you've done it, does it feel amazing? Yeah. Yeah? Alhamdulillah. And I hope you guys at home too will take the chance, inshallah, to help up mum and dad. Uh, at home, in whatever you can, inshallah. So well done to Kyra and um, Khadija for being so helpful to mum and dad, inshallah. And the biggest thing about it, not only does it feel great, Allah will reward you. So let's always remember that, inshallah. Right, I'm going to, going, going to go to our next part of the show, which is that we are going to go back into the Seerah of the Prophet. For those that have been following the TV show, um, I'm hoping you know where we've got to. Did you guys watch last week? Where did we get to? Boycott. We did the boycott with you guys last week, and the, and the week after, did you see what part we did? Prophet Musa. 
It was the sorrow, year of sorrow. Do you remember the year of sorrow? When the Prophet Sallallahu uncle died and his wife Khadija died. So we spoke about that last time. Um, the death of his uncle and that resulted in the loss of protection. So what happened after that? It's called the incident of Taif. I'm only going to read the first couple of paragraphs and then inshallah I'll try to paraphrase and shorten what really happened because that's such an amazing, long and quite a hard actually part time for the Prophet So we're going to go into the seerah and we're going to go into the incident of Taif. Bismillah. Here we go. After a period of time without protection, the Prophet ﷺ began searching for sustainable options outside of Medina, or outside of Mecca. Sorry, his reluctance to do so for many years, despite the increasing hardships, truly demonstrates the Prophet's prophetic method of patience and perseverance. Meaning, he chose not to leave Mecca and go and tell Islam to other cities. He decided not to do that for a long time until now. Now he's thinking, I've got to go. I've got to go. So the Prophet took inspiration from the prophets before him, such as Noah Salam, who gave dawah to his people for. 950 years. However, without the protection of the Prophet's life being in danger, he had to make, make the move somewhere. So the closest city to Mecca was a city called Taif. Between tensions and peace treaties, the two competing cities enjoyed a love-hate relationship. The people of Taif were intimately aware of the people of Mecca and vice versa. Taif was therefore an ideal base for the Prophet ﷺ to explore. So he took, his, he took Zayd ibn Haritha alayhi salam, um, uh, anhu, and quietly went to, and travelled to Taif on foot so that nobody would know he went. They walked for two days and met with the leaders of Taif who were three brothers who ruled the tribe of the Thaqif or I should do it Qaf, the Thaqif in unison. These were Abdul Yalil, Masud and Habib. Now I'm going to paraphrase. So, the Prophet ﷺ with, with, his, uh, with ha Zayd ibn Haritha went to Taif, mm. spoke to these three brothers who were the leaders and told them about the dawah. But they mocked him and they teased him and they did not accept it at all. And they laughed at him and they asked the Prophet ﷺ to leave. So the Prophet realised there's nothing he can do. He can't stay in Taif. He wanted their protection because he no longer had Abu Talib. He wanted to move there and give them dawah. But clearly these two brothers weren't going to have it. Our three brothers, sorry, they weren't happy with it. So the Prophet decided to leave, but the three brothers very dastardly. They asked the kids in the town to start chucking stones at the Prophet to make sure he left faster. As the Prophet ﷺ and Zayd were leaving, kids started chucking huge rocks and huge stones at the Prophet. And they kept chucking and chucking and chucking. And it hit the Prophet and it and it bruised him and it made him bleed and then he started to bleed so much that his shoes became filled with blood from all the... but he had to leave and he somehow managed to leave and get to a garden outside of Taif and the kids stopped chasing and stopped chucking those stones and this was a time when the Prophet ﷺ sat there he opened his shoes, he found blood in his shoes the blood had poured so much in his shoes he was dazed from all of that but it was absolute, uh, the ordeal in Taif was atrocious for the Prophet ﷺ. Had such a bad time there. And he sat there. And inshallah, next week, I hoped I can spend time because the Prophet sat there and made what we would call, um, what I, my opinion is, an amazing dua to Allah. And I hope next week I can actually go through this dua with you because I'd like everyone to hear it. And it shows how amazed the Prophet was. He was the Prophet of Allah, the, probably the most amazing creation. Yet, he had to make this plea to Allah because of what he just suffered at Taif. Um, and even once, later on in life, Aisha asked the Prophet Sallallahu you know, what was the most, um, asked him what was the most um, horrid day of his life, saddest day of his life, and he said it was this day, the day in Taif, the year of sorrow, this was his most horrid time. So inshallah, next week when we pick back up on the seerah, we will talk about the dua that the Prophet makes outside of Taif. Right? I've got a lot more things to cover because I wanted to talk to my guest today about Prophet stories. So, um, Khadija, I'm going to come to you first because um, we were talking about this before. Um, tell us um, one of this Prophet story. What's, what's your favourite Prophet story? 
any prophet story. It could be Prophet Muhammad, it could be any of the other prophets. What's your favourite story? My favourite prophet story was Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad's story, subhanAllah. Is there one part of his life that you find really, um, is a nice story that you want to tell us? What part of his life do you find amazing? The part that I find amazing is that he didn't have many Muslims in his country, but he 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 fighting back That's um, right. for the non-Muslims. That's right. There wasn't anyone in Islam, and he fought and fought to bring many people into Islam. And by that fighting, it means giving dawah by talking. He didn't have to go and hit someone, did he? At the beginning, no. How about you, Cairo? What's your favourite story? My favourite story of one of the prophets is Prophet, Prophet Ibrahim salam because the amazing part was that when he, when the non-Muslims, when they threw him into the fire, he, Allah told the fire to make the fire cold for him so he can't feel the burning, like, the fire. So, and then when the people were shocked because he was just walking out and he wasn't burnt or anything. SubhanAllah, isn't that an amazing story? Yes, absolutely. Uh, the story of Prophet Ibrahim being thrown into the fire and yet the fire not being able to do anything. Uh, and we know this from the, that's a story from the Quran. So thank you for sharing that, Kaira. And um, you guys at home, I'm sure you've got um, a favourite Prophet story. If you don't want to come in to tell us, share it with us and I would like to read out whatever you send to me, inshallah. Um, so yeah, let's look forward to that. Right. This is um, probably the favourite part of our show when we look at the games. And I promised I'm going to play this game again this week. Um, so this game we're going to play is called Quick Link. Mums and dads, go and buy this game for your kids. It's good fun and you'll see why. Khadija, that's a squeaker for you. Kyra, the squeaker. View. How does the game work? Yep, we've got the squeakers. Oops, <laughs> we've got the squeakers on us. And why do we squeak? So we've got some descriptive words in cards here. Okay, Kyra, I'm going to let you go first, okay? So, um, Kyra, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pick up the card. And oh, actually, let's just test just to make sure your squeakers are working. So let's test my one. Okay, mine is working. Khadija's yours working. Very good. Kyra, is yours working? Very good. We're only going to squeak if we, if we think that it doesn't make any sense. Okay? So, very first card I'm going to pick up. This is for you, um, Kyra. The word that I want you to find a descriptive word for is cheese. Quickly, cheese. away you go. See what you can find for cheese. Let, let Kyra go first. Uh, cheese, what is cheese? Oh, she's got the easy one. Edible. Right. Kyra has picked the word. Show the screen the one you picked up. Kyra has picked edible. Cheese and edible. Explain to us why are these words linked. Because edible means like you can eat it and you can eat cheese. I think everyone at home will agree with me that, yeah, Kyra has a good point. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make it a bit tricky. If you're someone that can't eat dairy products, would these two words link? No. Why? Because... Like, um, cheese is a dairy product. Very good. Cheese is a dairy product. So, if you had dairy, if you were uh, allergic to dairy, then these two words would not link and we would say, <coughs> don't we? Okay, well done, um, Kyra. Keep that card. Khadija, I want you to find a word that describes cheese. Go! I know. Um. Okay. Kyra, um, Khadija, what's the word you picked up? Fresh. Fresh. Cheese and fresh. Explain to me why they are linked. Because cheese and fresh is linked because sometimes cheese is really fresh. Are we going to agree with her, uh, Kyra? <laughs> oh, Kyra doesn't want to agree. Why? Because not all cheese is fresh. It's true. It's true. It's true. So she has a good point, but you have. But cheese is still fresh. That's it. Let's have another go. That's the cheese was a really hard one. Right. Let's yeah. put your cards back. Let's put your cards back. And this time I'll let Khadija go first. Okay. Um, right. Oh, this is my favourite word. The word is cat. Khadija, pick something that describes a cat. Cat. Don't pick fresh, <laughs> unless you want to eat your cat. Ah. <laughs> oh. Khadija, show the screen. Which word have you picked up? 
beautiful. You describe the link between cat and beautiful, please. Cats are beautiful because I have a cat that is beautiful. Cats are beautiful and Khadija has a cat that's beautiful. Thank you. Do we agree with uh, Kyra? Uh, yeah. Yeah? What if your cat looked like the cat on TV called Garfield, which is a fat cat? Is he beautiful? No. 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 <laughs> Maybe that's the only time we can go. Yeah, you squeaked before. Well done. Right. Kyra, pick up a card that describes cat. Go. Very good. Right. When you're ready, Kyra, what's the card you picked up and explain to us the link? Colourful. Colourful. Kyra picked the word colourful linking with cat. Explain to us why. Because cats, they all have unique colours and my cat is black and white. So mm. sometimes the cats can be one colour, they can be two and they can even be three. And cows are black and white. Do you agree with her? Is cats colourful? Yeah. But I'm going to say cats are probably, in my opinion, dull coloured. Because you you're not going to find a bright red cat or a bright green cat. Maybe. Colours. But I'll let you keep that one. No, I'm just being difficult. So cat and colourful, that's, it should go. And I was going to pick alive, but some cats, they, they're not really. That's true, it's a good one. Cat and alive. Gosh, I didn't even look at the time. We're running out of time, guys. So if you want to get your cards back, we're going to do the last part of our episode today. Last part of our show, which is I'm going to pick out, um, I'm going to pick out another quick yeah. quote from... Ramadan Mubarak with Tariq Hussain. I love um, the quotes in here. And I picked this out because I want to talk about this quote from the Quran with, um, with um, sorry, not from the Quran, this hadith um, with Kaira and Khadija. And the hadith I'm going to read out today is, prayer is a light, charity is a proof, and patience is luminous. This is a hadith from Muslim. What do you think? How, how does that make you feel, um, Khadija? Prayer is a light. What, the, what do you think that means? Prayer, um, prayer is a light that means that people like prayer. But maybe. Prayer is so nice. It's light and bright and people like it. Kaira, what do you think of the other parts? I, I think uh, wait, charity is a... Charity is a proof. Charity is a proof because like if you... You give charity and like, if... And you see you help someone, is that proof? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. You guys at home, what do you think of that hadith? I mean, the last part there, patience is a luminous, I would agree with that. If you sit there patiently and wait and wait for something good to happen, you just brighten up, then you become luminous. Inshallah. Oh my gosh, we've run out of time. Did you guys have a good time today? Yeah. I hope you guys at home had a good time. And inshallah, uh, sorry you couldn't share any, any of your... Um, uh, messages that has come in recently but inshallah keep them coming we will spend some time to look at them and i hope to see you soon i hope to have my guests back soon at some point thank you again kyra and khadija and thank you all of you guys at home mums and dads thank you for keeping your children engaged in, in these each other i hope to see you again next week until then i'm your host abul hasla and i'll see you next week wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh